uh, may I greet you. Thank you for coming to this online meeting. Uh, we are we welcome you at our program. Congratulations upon uh, well upon actually entering right. So you at the point are our students, right? So you pass the selection and everything. So and today uh, I will illustrate a little bit. Uh, well, not only I myself uh, the curriculum, right? The courses that are offered. And then you will be able to ask your questions. So with me today is Irina Ivanovna Zhunic, who is at the point, uh, who is the manager of the program and who is at the point is exceptionally busy with uh, uh, updating. So it, here she everyone. is, right, with updating the curricula in accordance with the latest requirements. So she will not be in a meeting, well, like a separate speaker, but well, here she is nearby. always with us nearby. So if we need her help, so um, Irina Ivanovna is at our disposal. Well, and uh, I will be kind of the speaker of the meeting. So my name is Alexey Valentinovich Bakulev, and I am the academic supervisor of the program. Uh, and let us begin. I will share the screen. So I will begin by telling you generally about the program. Yeah, and then uh, the question and answer session will go. Let me share the screen. So can you see the slides? Yeah, we see it well. Excellent. So let me start the slideshow. Uh huh. So I will now test uh, the slide switching. You can see the slide switching, right? Okay. All right. Um, so overall, so we'll begin with some overall information. Our program is taught or within the framework of linguistics. So this is the official standard code 45 or 45.04.02. This is just the code. Uh, the standard is accepted in the Ministry of Education and re uh, Higher Education and Research in Russia. And so th that's just the number. And uh, there are four specializations within our program, uh, one of which you will choose to your liking and also to your opportunities. So this is foreign language teaching. This is intercultural communication in a global information space, modern translation and interpreting studies, and a linguistic research in a modern interdisciplinary context. It's noteworthy that foreign language teaching and intercultural communication in a global information space are taught in English. Well, with the exception of what we call second foreign language, Spanish, Italian, German, Chinese, or French. But I will talk about it later. But generally, all the courses are taught in English within the first two specializations. Modern translation and interpreting studies naturally presupposes Russian quite a bit and a high level. Uh, C1 on the Common European Framework of Reference, or at least B2. Uh, and the same goes uh, with linguistic research in a modern interdisciplinary context. So the latter two specializations are taught both in English and in Russian. And so the requirement uh, for Russian is also, let's say, B2, C1. If you don't speak Russian at this level, you are welcome to choose between the former two, foreign language teaching and intercultural communication in a global information space. So, but these are just the overall features. Uh, according to the new standard of HSC University's master's program, uh, all the programs, including us, foreign languages and intercultural communication, and all the specializations within, 
with it. Uh, our structure as follows. It contains the so-called key seminars. It also covers courses under the umbrella term major. There is also a set of courses loosely connected or unconnected with your specialization called Mago Lego. Uh, each of you will take a period of internship, either research internship, if you focus on linguistic studies or mm, let's say professional internship as it is termed here in Russian. Uh, so that's for those of you who specialize in teaching, translation, interpreting, and intercultural communication. And there will be final state certification. Final state certification is writing your dissertation and then defending it at the end of the second year. Well, the program comprises two years, as most master's programs all over the world. So uh, I will briefly describe each point, and I will not get back to the final state certification. I've just mentioned it. So you write a dissertation and you defend it. Seminars focus on the recent research and empirical advances in this or that specialization. They consist of the so-called advisor seminar and also a set of research and project seminars. Within the framework of the advisor seminar, depending on your specialization, you will have meetings, group meetings, individual meetings, and discussions uh, as regards your individual curriculum, as regards your uh, educational trajectories. So advisors in discussion with you will help you to define which elective courses to pick, uh, what core results to focus on, uh, what research or project work trend or trends to observe and to follow, etc., etc. And uh, those meetings might be like workshops or like standard classes, and they could be one-on-one -on -one conferences as well. Uh, within the advisor's seminars, you will also be discussing the concepts of your master's dissertation. So this advisor's seminar will go for two years. Uh, you will have regular meetings like classes in September and October, first in the first year, and then in April, May, and June. And in between, there will be uh, individually scheduled conferences. As to research and project seminars, they, they can be classified into two groups, the ones that are given in the first year and the ones focused on in the second year. Uh, in the first year, as this chart demonstrates, the focus is on general, well, on linguistics. And within the second year, it is on your specializations. All research and project seminars are taught in English, with the exception of translation and interpreting studies. So during the first year, there is a list of offered research and project seminars here on the left. And you will be uh, you will take two compulsory research seminars, language for specific purposes, or rather, uh, research problems of language for specific purposes and the second is now being defined it could be phonetic variation and multicultural communication in english or exploring leadership communication practices this is yet being defined so two will be compulsory and you can also choose two more out of what is left so it could be axiological linguistics or linguistics of values. It could be Germanic and Romance languages. It could be linguistic personology. Uh, we might add one or two more. So here you are mandated 
to take two, just these specific two, and you can choose two others. Uh, you can choose on your own, but also your advisor will help, will consult you. In the second year, uh, depending on your specialization, you will take a group of project or research seminars under these umbrella names. If you are a translator or an interpreter, it's this one. Translation and interpreting in professional communication, and that could be many different things, audiovisual translation or localization and in, uh, internationalization of movies or websites. It could be aspects of fiction translation, uh, aspects of simultaneous interpreting, etc., etc. So each year it changes, because uh, for this seminar we usually involve people who work in translation. So they are invited lecturers. So, and e again, each year they might change a little bit. If you focus on intercultural communication, it's translinguistics and transcultural communication. So bits of conflict management, uh, well, how all this gets transformed and everything in, in the context of intercultural communication. Um, foreign language teachers continuous professional development. Well, uh, being the academic supervisor of the whole program, I am the advisor of this teaching track, teaching specialization. And so within this uh, seminar, uh, you will um, take seminars on uh, needs analysis, on course design, Fundamentals of Assessment, Teaching Business English, and Teaching English in Academic and Business Environment. Uh, so uh, we focus on teaching different groups, different ages, but mostly we focus with the target, you know, to uh, for you to teach at a university level then, not only at a school level, but also at a university level. By the way, you can teach at a university level after you graduate, no matter what specialization you take. But of course, those who are in teaching come to the fore in this respect. And for the linguistics specialization, for current linguistic research, it is new trends and methods in modern areas of linguistics. So this is what will happen to you in year two. So again, this is for everyone, and this is depending on the specializations. Moving on, there is such an option as Mago Lego, and it literally works like a Lego constructor. Here you can pick whatever you like during your first year and also during your second year. Uh, you will have a look at a pool of courses all over HSE University, and you can choose something that sort of that is sort of related to linguistics, uh, or totally unrelated. So you can pick something connected, I don't know, with literary studies or with cinema studies or perhaps with economics or computer science or psychology. So here uh, you will have quite a freedom. Um, so choose whatever you like. And within this framework, you will also be offered the so-called adaptive courses, which you will have a chance to attend in the fall semester of your first year. Adaptive courses are courses for those who have no experience in the preferred specialization. For example, you have been a translator and or, or you are not a linguist. OK, but you are thinking of teaching and you would like to teach, but you don't have a lot of prior experience. So you will be offered an introductory adaptive course. So those courses, as you understand, are not compulsory. Well, the other Mago Lego co courses have to be elected, but adaptive courses are only recommended to those of you who, who are sure that they need this introduction. Uh, to the field. What comes next? The internship. And I, be I will begin from the right. 
uh, you will be involved in a team project. And you can pick the topic of a project uh, on the so-called project fair. When you come here, when the academic year starts, you will have this choice. You will get into a team uh, of students from different programs. And you will do, well, a project within the first year, which could be of different natures, let us say. It could be a project of, I don't know, designing an application or preparing a set of documents, for example, for, I don't know, international faculty and students. Or it could be drafting measures how to fight corruption in education or uh, tools of promoting HSC University uh, at different levels or your program at different levels or devising something, devising a robot maybe. So you will be able to choose and I will repeat, you will be teamed up with uh, students from other programs. So, and the projects can be both in Russian and in English. So you will choose according to the language which is convenient to you. Uh, the so-called professional practice and, and oh, professional internship, excuse me. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the project on the right uh, is done in the first year. The professional internship is done in the second year. And like I said, it's for translators and interpreters, intercultural communication specialists and teachers. So uh, it could be done at HSC University here or at any outside organization. Um, it is it is done in the the spring semester of the second year. Uh, it's usually winter, like before March, uh, like February March, uh, and that could be anything. You could be you could teach a class, or you could work as a translator or an, or an interpreter, or an intercultural mediator, or a team lead at an organization. Well. Again, that will depend. Um, and there will be this the so-called research internship. This is for those who will pick the specialization, current linguistic trends in a modern interdisciplinary research. It, it could also, so that will be more about um, kind of scientific stuff, if you will. Uh, it can be done at HSE University or also outside. Uh, so it and it will presuppose an excessive focus on research. So the professional internship is a bit more like in your job, uh, and research uh, internship is well for those who took linguistic uh, current linguistic studies. It's also for those who are thinking of doing a PhD further. So that's what uh, that's what uh, we have to talk about concerning the internship. Major. Uh, so major courses are all are grouped into two big groups for everybody or for all the specializations and for specific ones. Uh, major for all. These are, this is a list of courses that you will acquire to take whatever, whatever specialization you cannot, you, you have to take them. So the whole first year, that will be English for the current social agenda and you are required to attend it unless you are a native speaker of English. If you are a native speaker of English, of course, you have every right for this course to be replaced with something else and the advisor and the program manager will help you. Then the required course is general linguistics and history of linguistic studies. That's the first year, uh, fall semester, and maybe the beginning of the spring semester a little bit. It is text creating, interpreting, and editing. And it also has something to do with creative writing. It's during the spring semester of the first year, and it's also compulsory for everyone. And also one so-called so second foreign language. You choose one of the two 
and you study it for two years. It could be either German or French or Spanish or Italian. And this year we are introducing Chinese as well. By default, we teach these languages from the beginning. But if you are of an intermediate or of an advanced level, right? And if there is a group of students of about, let's say, eight people of your level, we can open it. However, if this, not, if this is not the case, there could be an exception. Uh, again, it has to be negotiated very thoroughly. If uh, there is, if the language instructor also happens to teach a group of undergraduate students who are, for example, fourth year students or seniors and who are quite proficient in this, well, say in Spanish. And if the course instructor doesn't mind, he or she can accept you into this group. Don't worry about the credits. So they will still be transferred into master's credits. But again, I have to warn you, this will be, this is the first year this kind of practice will be tested and we cannot promise everyone like 100% that we will be able to place advanced students into such groups. But what is default is that all these languages will be offered from the beginning. But again, if among you, there are, let's say, eight, eight German B2 students, we will open a group. Unfortunately, we cannot open smaller groups. Well, seven, six, but this is the lowest. Yeah, we have to, this is because of the economic reasons, so the university cannot afford tiny groups. The only exception is that, uh, research track, research specialization about linguistics, because it's also for those who might keep in my mind, uh, bear in mind, uh, uh, who might plan, yeah, better to say, to write a PhD further. Yeah. So again, these for the first three, the former three courses are all taught in the first year. One of the second foreign languages is taught throughout the two years. Uh, what can you elect? Uh, in the first year, you can elect one of these, one of these courses, all taught in English. Uh, some of the courses are a bit more of a general character, like English speaking countries after World War II, or English literature of the 20th and 21st centuries, uh, and the other two are a bit more specific, like Russia and Britain. So, and it focuses on the relations of the two countries in the 20th and 21st centuries. And there is even one more specific course about the Cohen Brothers films. Here it is. So you choose one of them in the uh, first year, and they are all taught in the falls in the spring excuse me in the spring semester so you choose one of them uh, and there is one more elective which you will be offered in the second year in the second year you will uh, be offered two choices two two electives regardless of specialization and one elective for your specialization so we will strongly be recommending you to pick this contemporary culture of, well, either Chinese or German or Spanish or Italian or French speaking countries, depending on your, on the choice of your second language. All right. Again, it's optional, but we will be recommending it. Um, yeah, but this is in the second year. And the choice for specialization. For foreign language teaching, so these you uh, these ones uh, will be offered in the second year. So for foreign language teaching, well, well I apologize. Forget it. These are non-electives. These are compulsory ones for specializations. Within foreign language, uh, they all 
are taught for two years in the fall in the spring semester of the first year and in the fall semester of the second year. So for foreign language teaching, you take this one. Foreign language teaching to younger and adult learners in different contexts, but with a focus, with a greater focus on adult learners. For intercultural communication, it's pragmatics of inter and cross-cultural communication. For modern translation and interpreting studies, that is translation and interpreting theory and practice, both translation and interpreting. And here, for linguistic research in a modern interdisciplinary context, it's recent advances in linguistic theory, also the 20th, the 21st century centuries. Again, these courses are taught both in the spring semester of the first year and in the, the fall semester of the second year. And they are compulsory. Electives. For each specialization, you can choose one out of two in the second year, in the fall semester of the second year. For foreign language teaching, it's either information communication technology in teaching languages or foreign language assessment, intercultural communication. It's either modeling of intercultural dialogue or intercultural mediation. For translation and interpreting, it's either translation of business documentation or scientific and technical translation. And for linguistic research, it's either linguistic creativity or trans and fiction translation in the 21st century. Uh, you will probably think why there's fiction translation here, but uh, the focus is not so much, not only from the translation paradigm, but from the general linguistics and literary studies paradigm. So uh, it's here. Mm. Yeah, but we are also planning to open it also for the other specializations, not only for linguists, but also for the other specializations, not only for linguistic researchers, excuse me, you are all linguists by uh, sort of the umbrella term again. Uh, and that's basically it uh, regarding uh, the curriculum. So this is our location, <coughs> excuse me. You do know the website, I guess, if you happen to be in Moscow, well, you can drop by. Here are our contacts. So feel free to email us or feel free to give us a call. Um, that's okay, when we are out of the office, we will get a call transfer. Uh, yeah, and so you're highly welcome. Uh, uh, what was I, what else w was I about to say? Ah, uh, the, the school, the new academic year will start in September, but uh, you will have an orientation day or days uh, in August. I don't quite know when exactly you will be reached out to by the International Admissions Office and they will consult you thoroughly. But generally, we will be studying offline, but in a hybrid mode. That is to say, if some of you, by this or that chance, cannot arrive, so you will be able to, to join us online. So, but, and then come whenever you like, whenever you can, and uh, you will be offline. But I will repeat, so the focus is on offline learning plus within this hybrid mode, um, online for those who cannot make it uh, to Russia before or before September. So the orientation session for such students will also be held online. Well, I suppose at this point I'm done. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to ask them. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, hi. Yes, sir. hi, sir. I'm Kamar Zaman. I come from uh -huh. Indonesia. 
Mm -hmm. I want to ask uh, questions. How about students will get study in English touch class? Can we get one year uh, Russian preparatory class there? Mm, well, uh, actually, yes, you can take courses of Russian. Well, as to uh, preparation, but you're not talking about a prepar preparatory year, are you? Oh, I see. You are not talking about a prepar preparatory year, am I right? Yeah. OK, now you will be able to take classes in Russian, but if at this point uh, you do, uh, well, your Russian perhaps is not enough to take translation, take teaching or take intercultural communication. All will be in English. And as to the second foreign language, yeah, nah. Uh, the explanations will be in English if necessary. So um, it won't be if, well, again, if at this stage your Russian is not yet as advanced, it won't be an obstacle. But sorry, no translation or no linguistic research specializations, only the, the former two, teaching and intercultural communication. But yeah, you can take Russian courses, sure, of different levels, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Oh, I see. Yeah, thank you. And uh -huh, there are two more hello. hands. Uh -huh, hello, Yusuf, right? Uh, yeah. You are welcome. Uh, it's me, Yusuf. I'm from Algeria. Uh, my question is uh, is about students who already uh, know uh, foreign languages. So, for example, uh, me, I speak French at mm -hmm. B2 level. Uh, can, for example, uh, have an exchange, exchange, exchange sessions with the students who already have a native speaker of uh, Spanish, for example, because I will choose uh, Spanish uh, as my uh, second language. So you would like, so you wouldn't like to take French, as I understand, but you would yeah. rather take Spanish, yeah? Yeah, because I already have uh, B2. In That's Spanish. totally possible. That is totally possible and good news for you. We have, well, for all of you, we have language clubs and there is the French club, which you are welcome to attend. Yeah, so and practice your French there. And are, yeah. there, are there between us uh, who who's, uh, uh, his first language is uh, Spanish? His native mean, language is Spanish. Is the teacher a native speaker? I mean, oh. a student of with us. Oh, there, there will be different students, both Russians and internationals. So there will be a mixture. We don't know how we will form groups, but I mean, we of course do not discriminate. And there will be, uh, well, all will depend on two things, on your schedule and on the educational preferences and opportunities. But no, your groups will be quite mixed. So, uh, yeah, Russians and internationals. And uh, what about uh, Russian language? Can we t take uh, Russian language uh, yes. for free? Yes, sure. Yes. For free? Yeah. Or we have yeah, to pay. Absolutely. Well, no, you don't have. Well, you might have to pay only if the number of credits is over sixty within a year. But the both the program manager and the advisor will orientate help you orientate so it if it is within the number of credits you don't have to pay at all so but we will see case by case i mean how many credits you have and how to put the uh, you know the russian classes within your curriculum but yeah there will be courses in russian and for uh, my, my next question is about uh, for uh, uh, scholarship holders. When will when will you receive uh, our uh, invitation for visa? Well, honestly, I'm not quite sure about the terms and the deadlines. But what I do know is that the international admissions office will contact you as soon as they are ready. I would guess they will start contacting you in may but uh, i well at this point don't know 100 percent okay but yeah like i said they will be getting in touch with you quite soon well okay I, thank I'm you hoping, mm -hmm, yeah 
hope that sooner than later. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're done, right, Yusef? Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And then the next uh, was Collins, right? Yeah, I'm Collins. I'm Collins from Nigeria. Good. Well, I I'm sorry. I never said nice to meet you guys. I apologize, of course. <laughs> nice to meet all of you. Sorry about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. No problem. It's nice meeting you. So my question is um, concerning um, the internship. Mm -hmm. So I would love to know the internship, um, who's going to sponsor it? Is it um, the student or no. our department? It's the department. Okay, it's the department, the department. yeah. Sure. Uh, you don't have to pay for the internship. No, 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 no. Well, however, yeah. however, if you would like to do your internship in an organization of your choice out, well, which is not offered by HSC University, you will simply have to submit an application for that, this. Uh -huh. But if you would like to choose what HSC University offers, you don't have to pay for that, no. Okay, so from what I I I got from you, I I guess you are trying to say if it's outside the um, Russia, you have to pay for it or what? Have for instance, for you it. want to do for instance, if you want to do your internship outside Russia, are you mm. going to be the one to pay for it or what? If if department? outside Russia, well, yes. you see, it it will depend if you would like to take your internship outside Russia and outside the partnership of okay. HSC University, that will depend on an organization. Okay. Yeah, and well, again, I, I guess that will work like case by case. If this, if this very organization where you would like to take internship is ready to accept you, and if there is no partners, if there is partnership with HSC University, well, that's okay. But if there is no, we'll have to, to have a look at it. But uh, yeah, but in this case, they might ask you to pay. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And HSE University in this case cannot guarantee that um, they will pay for you. Well, HSE University guarantees paid internship. I mean, that it will be sponsored by the university only uh if we talk about hsc university's partners all yeah. right okay thank you very much yeah, sure absolutely very welcome uh, and that's it do i understand you correctly right that's the final question of yours for now yes yeah yes. okay thank you and then uh lubov your questions um, good afternoon Fine. So, uh, I have a question about uh, second foreign language. Now mm -hmm. I'm studying French, but okay. I'd like to, to choose another language as my second one. But uh, is there any chance to practice French? I mean, to continue practicing French? Well, like I said before, yeah, thank you. Like I said before, uh, there is a French club available first. And second, uh, if a French language instructor teaches senior undergraduates, for instance, or junior undergraduates, and is ready to accept you in his or her class, this is how you can do it. Uh, however, if you take one second foreign language, a different one, uh, you will not be able to take the third, unfortunately. Well, at I least... Mean, like, uh -huh. uh... I mean, extra classes for myself, for self-study. Ah, like a help room. Well, uh, we do have help rooms. Well, so-called help rooms. And if there is one, yes, sure. But again, there is a the French club, which holds regular meetings uh, for people with diverse levels. And uh, there are meetings for, well, for people who are confident speaking French. Well, and there is a Spanish club also, German club. As far as I know, Chinese club as well, and Italian club. So it's mostly about extracurricular activities then. Yeah. Thank you, I understood. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, colleagues, do you have any other questions at this point? <clears throat> no. Okay, no questions at this point, Hi. 
Well, while you might still be thinking of them, uh, well, and if you don't have them now, it's okay. But if you have them later, we can always, uh, well, we can always get in touch via email or if necessary, we can schedule an online meeting like that. Uh, so this is not a problem. Uh, uh, yes. I just uh -huh. have one question. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I just uh, one month ago, I just received the uh, an application form for to to fill it about my choice, mm -hmm. my special agent's preference. Mm -hmm. You will take it into consideration, or of, we will uh, do it again. No, no. Well, when now, you arrive to Russia. Okay. So uh, there will be a chance to alter it, but we do need to have a general idea, at least a general idea, what specialization preferences you have. We need that to, well, at least blueprint the schedule, right? And to predict at least roughly professor's workload. So, uh, yeah, you answer what you would like to choose now but upon arrival to russia if you change your mind of okay. well this is at this point it's not like once and for all so later on yeah there can be alterations okay so like someone someone who who, who changed his mind they can do it in russia yes absolutely okay thank you yeah right sure okay Right, thank you. Oh, someone's on hold. Uh, so, Kamruzaman, you have another question, right? Okay, yeah. one question again from me, sir. Yep. Will the university allow us to get the job to support our cost living there? If yes, how we can get uh, a legal job. job over there? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, or you, well, I mean, it's okay to yeah to work during your well studies that's quite a common practice well the thing is yeah you you need to have legal permits for that or uh, i will clarify the questions there are specific procedures well ideally well you can at least be well we have a system of say teaching assistants uh as to working outside universities outside university excuse me i'm afraid right now i cannot answer your questions well the question it is of course possible but as to the documents well uh, the only thing is of course our legal department will help but well right off my mind i cannot tell you exactly how it will happen but yeah there is a chance yeah there is a chance of course yeah. Okay, well, so. I, I will research the question and well, if you kindly, maybe I will try to remember it, just marked it here. Uh, but if you say remind me in a week or two, that would also be helpful. Yeah, so then I will definitely not forget to to talk to the folks from the legal department. So. Jobs for international students. Yeah. I marked it here on my sticker. Oh, you probably yes. cannot see it. <laughs> yes, job, yeah. jobs for international students. All right. Uh, any other questions? Well, uh, folks, your, your hands are all up. Does it mean you still have questions? Or is it just you're keeping them up? No, I'm not, sir. OK. OK, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you don't have questions, could I kindly ask you to put your hands down? Well, just to kind of make sure to, to see, well, that you don't have questions or if that you still do. Oh, Yusef, sorry. Do you still have another? I, I put your hand down myself, but do you still have another question? Your hands up again. No, no, I have a question. Oh, no. oh, okay, okay. Sorry. 
All right. No, it's okay. It's all right. So, well, if at this point you don't have questions, thank you for joining. Again, remember, if you we will share the slides and the recording with you. So, and if you have any uh, questions further, you are welcome to ask. Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry. Just remember, uh, are there any students for uh, with us uh, for my country? Just to to get in touch with him. Uh, well, excuse me. Could you remind me where you are from? You, you Algeria. mentioned Algeria. Uh, well, at or our, at least uh, my region. I mean Maghreb or Middle East. Well, at least at HSC University for sure. At our program, yeah, I guess too. Well, do we have? Yeah, well, we have quite a few people from North Africa, as far as I remember. Or no, or not North Africa. Well, uh, so Algeria, Egypt. What else? Tunisia? No, no, not Tunisia. Well, Nigeria, Ghana. Right. We have we have uh, Egypt. One from Egypt. Egypt. Yes. Yeah. Tunisia. Tunisia? No, no. I was so just... Algeria. So just me, me who is from Algeria and uh, the Egyptian one. Mm -hmm. But over all over HSC University, there can be more. And again, the application process is not closed yet. So for the scholarship, it is closed and you've been selected. But there may be new or more students who will come uh, to study for for tuition. And okay. there may be there may be people from your country. Sure. Well, we just don't know at the point. But at HSC University, there may be some people. From Algeria. No, just uh, asking for this uh, yeah. program. Yeah, uh, be, okay, I see. To be updated. Okay, all right. So uh, when uh, when the application process is over, you will know you will get the list of your classmates. So you'll be able, and we will be able to see more precisely if there are some people from. Okay, thank you for asking. Uh, uh, compatriots, yeah, you're welcome. Yes, Lubov. Your question. Uh, I have a question about documents. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked it in my university about the deadline for getting diploma, and they uh, answered that maybe I will get it after August. But the deadline for submitting diplomas, uh, the deadline is August first. Okay. Well, I'm sure that's negotiable. Could you write about this to the admissions office, to HSC admissions office? Okay. Because yeah, it's not like it's not your fault. Um, yeah, well, they probably could share the great tra great transcript with you. Well, I would, if I were you, I I would also contact them. But I would recommend that you contact the admissions office too, just to make sure, explain the situation to them. Well, I believe that's totally negotiable. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right. So any other questions? Sir? Yes? Where we can get the recorded video? Uh, we will share. Yeah, uh, we'll share the link to it. So either Irina Ivanovna or myself will share the link to the video via email. OK. Sure. And the slides as well. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, Collins. Yeah, so please, I would like to know your name again. Uh, my name is Alexei. You say? Alexei. OK, Alexei. Yes, precisely. Yeah. Thank you. Almost like Alexander, but a bit, a bit shorter. But the uh, root is the same. 
Ja. Okay. Lexi. Ja, sweet. Perfect stress. Thank you. Ja. In Russian it sounds slightly different, but yeah, in English that's that's perfectly correct. You could also address to me as Professor Bakulev, but I don't mind the first name basis. That's OK. okay. First name basis is fine. But in Russia, when we talk in Russian to students, we usually use the first name and the patronymic, right? The patronymic is a derivative from the father's name. So and this is how I introduced myself. Yeah, Alexei Valentinovich. So my dad's name was Valentin, so I am Valentina Vich. So hmm. Vich is the male suffix. And uh, uh, Irina Zunich, the manager, so her dad's name is Ivan, so she is Irina Ivanovna. So in the Russian discourse at an official level and in a conversation between t uh, professors and students or, well, administration and students, it is common for students to address us with our first names and those patronymics in, in when we speak Russian. Yeah. Well, in English, it's OK to use first names. Yeah. That's fine. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. No, Kamaruzaman, your hand is up still. So does it mean you have a question? Yes, yeah, sir. <clears throat> Can we take uh, one preparatory, run your preparatory Russian online and <laughs> offline for to your study? One, well, well, again, by preparatory, you mean you first take this year and then you take your master's. Is this what you are saying? Ooh. Or alongside doing your master's. But my senior said that uh, he take uh, one preparatory uh, Russian online. Uh, well, online is OK, but again, the question is by preparatory. Do you mean because we have this system? Uh, uh, well, that works. Just one year of preparatory studies, not as master's students, and then doing the master's. So this is why I'm asking, are you talking about this first year and then master's or together? You will start your master's, which you can do in English, plus this year at the same time. <clears throat> Because, yeah, that's kind of well. Yeah, I think uh, one one year preparatory is uh, a preparation before get to your study. Uh huh. All right. Well, the thing is, well, you are actually well, I mean, you are actually admitted to the masters. Well, do they have this? I'll just I will clarify. Well, is it possible? Yeah. So, well, if a student has already been accepted, can they take a full preparation year in Russian and um, then start studying? I'm not. The question for I, 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 so, who can they then address? Uh, so, the, to the admissions office, right? Yes. Okay. Well, in this case, just because you are already accepted, uh, so the situ the case is a bit different. So, again, this is rather a question to the admissions office. Like you write to them, so hi, I've already been offered a state funded, a scholarship funded place, right? But I have a question. I want to take a first preparatory year before doing the main program. So just ask them if you can do it, because usually it happens this way. First students take this year and then they get enrolled in, as masters. So your situation is a bit different. Well, I guess you'd better contact the admissions office. They will. I will again do it too, just to to check it on my end. Uh, but yeah, 
do write to them too. Yeah, just to, to make sure. OK, I, I see, sir. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome. Right. Any more questions? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it looks like we're done for today. So thanks for joining. Have a great day or maybe a great night. Uh, some of you, yeah. Uh, again, the recording and the slides will be forwarded to you. And again, I will repeat, if you have any questions further, do not hesitate to contact us. Well. So thank you for being with us. And yeah, have a great day.